All right, everybody. In this video, I am going to be showing you how I put videos on Plex step by step. If you're watching this, I assume you already have looked into Plex and may have movies laying around like me in tubs, cabinets, bags, maybe some just laying on the floor. In this video, I do a DVD and the procedure is the same for Blu-ray or 4K discs, but you will need a proper optical drive that can read Blu-ray and extra steps, which I will leave a link below to the YouTube video that helped me with the Blu-ray disc setup. This video is just to show you how I do things with tips and explanations I've learned along the way. So let's get into it. Today we are going to do the movie The Hangover. Here is the front and back cover. I always look at the back to see what I'm getting. From this, I can see that the audio is Dolby 5.1, movie length is 100 minutes or 1 hour and 40 minutes. Movie is rated R, region 1 disc, it is in a widescreen format, and movie was released in 2009. This movie is straightforward, but some can have different versions or both full screen and widescreen formats, and it is good to know the movie length. You'll see why later. Alright, we will need a couple of programs installed to do this. They are called Make MKV and Handbrake. Although Handbrake is not required, I use it and recommend it. It converts MKV to MP4 and makes a movie go from roughly 5GB to less than 1GB. In addition, I can't really tell the difference in quality between the two, and I personally like to save on storage. Links will be below in the description for these websites. This is what the Make MKV website looks like here, and this is the Handbrake website. Of course, go ahead and set up a Plex account as well and get all that installed. Later I will show you my folder setups. Let's go ahead and put in our disk. Now we will open our Make MKV program. Some things to note if you have multiple optical drives like me, make sure the correct one is selected, but usually it knows and will choose the right source. Here you can see it recognizes the movie is called The Hangover and some additional information like the total amount of data used on the disk when ready, click on the disk icon. Here it will begin to read the disk. You can see it scanning through the menu and collecting all the chapter information. After it has read the disk, you'll see several boxes show up like this. In this case, obviously, the movie is the one that is 3.2 gigabytes of data. The other options are ones that are a couple hundred megabytes. These could be bloopers, commentary, music videos, soundtracks, things like that. I only want the movie, so I will uncheck the other two. I have it set to only do English stuff, so it automatically unchecks anything else that is not English. You'll see here that the main movie was assigned a file name of A1T00. This weird naming is common, but important to remember for later. We can see it found this to be 100 minutes long. Just like the back cover stated, movie is roughly 3.2 gigabytes again, and there are 25 chapters to this movie. Next, we want to select our 
output folder or where we want this movie to be sent to when the conversion is complete. Select the folder icon and I have mine all go to a separate movie hard drive where I have a folder called media and I separate my movies from the shows. In this instance, I will select movie. Instead of doing this every time, you can go up to view, click on preferences, and select the folder you want it to go to every time. When you are ready, select this icon over here to make an MKV. Here you can see the source size is the 3.3 gigabytes and right here our output file is what we just selected with the file name A1T00. You can see it found the title one was the movie, 25 chapters, 1 hour 39 minutes. Also, it skipped a bunch of stuff because it knows they were less than 120 seconds. So these were probably previews and whatnot. I'm going to let this thing run its process. Usually it is about 10 to 15 minutes and come back when it is complete. almost complete now you can see our approximate output size and read rate uh, when it's done you'll get a uh, you'll get a message and if you see this movie oh, there's the message uh, if you see this movie took a little over 10 minutes to complete Yeah, if you click OK, uh, you can go ahead and close out of the program now. At this point, I would like to go see it in my movie folder, and remember it was named A1T00. Hovering over the file, I can see this is the MKV file. Final product is roughly 2.91 gigabytes, and again, length is 100 minutes. I'm going to open it and view it off the screen real quick I like to click somewhere in the middle of the movie and just check that the audio aligns with the mouths and although I've never had an issue with this uh, the alignment it's just something that I do and I think it's too easy to skip Next, we will open Handbrake program. Go ahead and click and drag the file, the MKV file over. And we can now close our file window. Now let me explain what we are looking at here. You can see our source here as A1T00 and our output destination down here. The dimension tab I never mess with but it is use it does contain useful information. Uh, we can see here that the video is in a widescreen format. The filter tab I never mess with. Uh, Really just the video, audio, and subtitle tabs are the only ones I mess with personally. For my video tab settings, all I change is the frame rate from variable 30 FPS to same as source. 
The reason why I do this is because I want the movie to have the exact same. I, I want it the exact same way it was on the disc. I've always chosen these settings and never had an issue. The quality bar over here, I have never touched and I've never had an issue. I am happy with my end results. Moving to the audio tab, I changed the mix down always to 5.1 personally. You can select whatever you want. Some old movies only have mono or stereo and I choose stereo. Again, 5.1 works for me and I, ha and I am happy with it. The subtitles tab, I always uncheck the burn in, even though it doesn't matter for me. Uh, so basically, forced only is when there are like brief moments a character speaks another language and they want you to understand the context. So they'll put the subtitles on the screen. Uh, you want that, or at least I do. So I leave that as it is uh, and then for the burn-in it doesn't matter because if you read what it says it says burn-in subtitles to the video stream note this will be automatically selected if the source subtitle track format is not supported in the output file type for example mp4 which is what I use so regardless checked or not subtitles uh, it, it's a habit for me to uncheck it Double check, make sure the things look good. Now select where the file will end up down here. Again, I select my movie folder. Here I will change the name to the hangover. Click save. Now you can see it's destination and proper labeling. When ready, go ahead and click add to queue. You can now see the queue has one and click uh, start queue. This process usually for me takes about five to six minutes. If you come up here to the queue, you can see more information. If you are doing a series, you can add multiple episodes in the queue before starting and you'll see them all listed here in their progress. I like to just do one thing at a time though. All right, I'll be back once this conversion from MKV to MP4 is complete. All right, so the conversion is complete. As you can see, it says Q finished. And I have it set to do uh, nothing when it's all done. Remember the original file name and our final name. And our final file name, sorry. Uh, this way we can go find them in our movie folder. Uh, go ahead and close out the program. Open our movie folder. And you can see here that the new file with the proper naming and that it is an MP4 file. It has 800, it's only 840 megabytes and it's still 100 minutes in length. Again, uh, I will open this off the screen to verify that we have both video and audio and that the audio aligns well with their mouths. I, I do this out of habit. Cool. Everything looks great. So now that we have our new MP4 file and our old MKV file, 
quickly we can actually do something pretty awesome uh, let's open our calculator our mp4 file is 0.84 gigabytes and our mkv file is 2.91 gigabytes therefore our new movie folder uses only about 29% of the storage. This is why I use Handbrake. With hundreds or thousands of movies, this adds up big time. I am now going to open up my Plex now, and I'm going to show you guys. Let me see here. Okay, I'm going to scroll to the H section. Plex organ they they kind of negate the the in the title. So I'm just going to go to H. And Okay, it should end up right here between these two. I'm going to go to my movie folder and click scan library file library files and bam it's our new file a couple of things here uh, I click the edit button I check that the addition I check the addition if there is one and I also check that the rating is correct. Uh, then I go to the fun part. I go over to the poster tab. You can do whatever you want here. I like to match it with the cover that I have. Uh, you here you can see there are unrated versions. Mine has the, uh, the little word the in the title. So you can see there's a few differences. I'm going to select the one I want. This one looks good here. Uh, next, I'm going to go to the background tab. This is what you will see when you access it on the TV and whatnot. I like this one here. So I'm going to click it and click save changes and you will see the cover update. Clicking on the movie itself, you can see the title is correct. You can watch the trailer. Uh, it's in standard definition. Uh, audio is in English. And if you scroll down, you can see uh, related movies, I guess, to other ones that are in my catalog. And Plex also pulls up extras from the internet. So this is your first movie. You will need to set up your movie folder in Plex. To do this, uh, go to your server and click the plus to add to library. Here you can select the library type and what folder you want linked to the library. After that, you can you can do what I did, where I. I clicked on my movie folder and I hit uh, scan library and you'll see your movie pop up. A uh, tip that I've come across the way is changing the editions. Let me let me find you an example.
So here's Anchorman. I have the unrated version. So after the movie name, if you type in with the style brackets edition dash unrated using no spaces, it will show up in Plex as unrated like this. I did, however, have to manually still change the rating from R to NR. And then I went in and I found the poster with the unrated version. That's just personal preferences. Uh, this also goes for other things uh, besides unrated. For example, I have the movie uh, Apocalypse Now. I have Redux version and the original theatrical edition. Or for Close Encounters, uh, I have original theatrical edition, special edition, and the director's cut. If you click on one of them in Plex, it will bring up the other two as well, which is pretty cool. Here you can see how I labeled those in my movie folder. Okay, that about wraps things up. Uh, one last thing, don't forget, uh, don't forget to go into your recycle bin and actually delete the old MKV folder. Otherwise, it will still be on your hard drive taking up space. Hope you enjoyed the video and you found useful content.